Space Runaway Idian, Yun Shuo Jushen Idian Den Setsu Kyojin Idian, lit. Legendary Giant Idian, also the Idian, is a 1980 anime television series produced by Sunrise, created and directed by Yoshiyuki Tamino, produced immediately following his most famous work, Mobile Suit Gundam. It first premiered on TV Tokyo from 1980 to 1981, followed by two feature films in 1982, and was later broadcast in Japan by the satellite TV network Animax from September 2006. Its mechanical designs were created by Yuichi Higuchi at Studio Submarine. The television series credited only the design studio, while Higuchi received full credit for the subsequent films. The characters were designed by Tomonori Kagawa. The series won the Animage Anime Grand Prix Prize for the second half of 1980. <laughs> Topic. Plot summary Topic. Television series prior to the ending Space Runaway Idion begins in 2300, far enough in the future that mankind has begun colonizing other planets. On the planet Solo in the Andromeda Galaxy, a group of archaeologists had come across the mysterious remains of the Idion, three large armored trucks with the ability to combine into a godlike mecha. They also come across a large spaceship, known as the Solo Ship. For six months, they had diligently restored the machines but failed to get the giant tanks to move. Suddenly, a humanoid alien civilization known as the Buff Clan comes across Solo. Kerala, the daughter of the Buff Clan's military commander flies down to the planet against orders with her assistant Mayaya to investigate her commanding officer, Gij, is reluctant with her, due to her standing and the fact that he once was a soldier under her father. She is pursued closely by comrades sent by Gij, but they lose sight of her. Assuming the aliens. Earthling colonists have attacked Kerala, the Buff Clan begins to attack. Cosmo Yuki, the Afro-wearing protagonist of the series, and his friends Kasha Imhuf and Dek Afta climb aboard the three tanks, which activate on their own, and, when they initially combine to form the Idian, fend off the first assault, repelling Gij's men. This is a short respite, though, as another force is sent down soon after. B.E.'s Jordan, leader of the sparse military force stationed with the colonists' orders that the Idian tanks be armed with missiles, but while that's happening the cities on Solo are obliterated by the buff clan soldiers. Gij and his partner Demito, meeting up with the leader of their expedition, Abadidi Guramade soon launch more attacks on the planet Solo in an attempt to capture the Idian, which they refer to as the Giant God. The survivors flee inside the Solo ship and Kerala, who was mistaken by B.E.'s as a colonist is let aboard as well. Other civilians who quickly get aboard the Solo ship include Cheryl Formosa, a linguist studying the civilization on Solo, Cheryl's sister, Lynn, Banda Lada, three children, Piper Lu, Ashura Nobaku and Fard Maraka, mechanic Jolliver Ira, pilot Hatari Naburu and Mora Fatima. The pilots Tekuno and Bento soon join Cosmo and Kasha as pilots of the Idian's three parts and Mora soon replaces B.E.'s as another pilot. Kerala and Mayaya are soon discovered to be aliens and while Mayaya is shot to death, B.E.'s has taken a liking to Kerala and she is allowed to live, although Cheryl and others distrust her. Kerala tells everyone of the legend of Ide, a story of the Buff Clan savior, who saved them with the power of Ide. The Buff Clan have searched the universe for this legendary existence, which is what powers both the Idian and the Solo ship. The Solo ship soon flees the planet Solo using its powerful DS drive engines and after a fight in sub-space with the Buff Clan arrive at the planet Saurus Star. 
BEs, Cosmo and the others confront Gij in a powerful dog Mac mobile suit and later in man-to-man -man fighting. Abadidi receives orders from above, Kerala's elder sister Harulu that they no longer have to worry about harming her and could kill Kerala if need be, since she has ashamed the Ajiba family by associating with the humans. The buff clan force chases the solo ship to the planet Crystal Star where Abadidi heads out himself in a dog mac. His attempts to destroy the solo ship with giant winged creatures known as Bajans backfires and it is he who is killed by them. With Abadidi dead and Demido injured Harulu herself heads to the front. Arriving on the planet Ruins Star, Kerala tries to make peace with her sister but is humiliated by Harulu's underlings. Things get even worse for her when Banda Lata, upset by all the harm the buff clan has caused tries to kill her but folds under pressure. Kerala willing to die impresses everyone on the solo ship with her strength. The solo ship arrives at an Earth base where Cosmo meets Camula, a female officer who reminds him of his mother. She soon dies right in front of him which renews his desire to fight. Demido, now recovered makes one final attempt to destroy the Idian but is killed as well. The solo ship heads to the planet Aegean and when Gij attacks the planet the Idian uses its powerful black hole cannon, which prevents the buff clan's missiles from hitting the planet, but destroys a lot of the planet as well. Gij heads back to the buff clan homeworld as the solo ship travels to the planet Flag Star. The solo ship and Harulu's Dorawa Zan meet in space and the Dorawa is destroyed. Harulu flees in an escape capsule and meets up with Duram Zuba, a former lover and member of the OME Foundation, which is plotting with Harulu and Kerala's father, Doba, to overthrow the buff clan emperor. With Gij with him Duram now becomes the main adversary of the solo ship as it goes to the planet Kiaral. Their Cosmo meets Kitty Kitten who desires for the solo ship to flee since it will bring nothing but more heartbreak to their war-torn planet. Kitty is shot to death soon after by Duram and Cosmo is injured, saved only by a blood transfusion from Kerala. The solo ship, still pursued by Duram, approach Earth but find that their fellow Earthlings will not welcome them. Cheryl and Jolliver head to the moon to use the Earth military's powerful Gloria computer and discover that the power of Ide is infinite. The solo ship is attacked yet again and the Idian uses its newest weapon, the Idian gun to defend itself. The three children sneak aboard the Idian in their latest battle with the buff clan's Barum Baram mobile weapon but this becomes an unforeseen benefit as the reaction of the children in danger make the Idian even more powerful and yet another weapon, the Idian sword is revealed. Gij, abandoned by Duram meets Cheryl and sneaks aboard the solo ship. Few trust him even after he kills Duram in a battle on Earth. The Earth military completely rejecting them, the solo ship flees without a home to go back to. The Buff Clan continues to send high-ranking Buff Clan officers after the solo ship, but all fail. Mora is killed in battle to the distress of everyone, especially Medic Ripot. Gij takes his place as one of the Idian's pilots. The solo ship returns to Aegean who now despises them for what happened earlier in the series and their military leader takes hostages, killing Cheryl's sister Lynn before he is stopped. The solo ship flees to the planet Stekin Star and Gij is killed when the Idian is heavily damaged. The Idian continues to get more and more powerful as the battles and deaths escalate and the Idian chops the entire planet in half as it makes its escape. Topic. TV ending With repeated failure by his military leaders, Doba Ajiba himself heads out on the Buff Clan flagship, the Biral Jin. Along with him is the OME Foundation leader, Gindoro. 
Kerala and Jolliver suddenly find themselves transported to the Biral Jinn and are caught by Doba and his men. Kerala reveals that she is pregnant with the child of an earthling's besses to the shock of everyone and they make their escape. The solo ship heads there to save them and do as Kerala and Jolliver survive despite their ship being shot down. Doba Ajiba then declares that he will do whatever it takes to end the life of his own daughter, causing the Idian's power to invoke. Kerala and Jolliver continue to head through the halls of the Biral Jinn and hide from the soldiers. They find the heavy mobile mecha hangar and defeat the soldiers there chasing them. Doba orders his soldiers to find out the source of the recent tremors occurring around the Biral Jinn. Suddenly the solo ship departs from DS space right in front of the Biral Jinn and rams right into it. The buff clan's forces approach the solo ship and the Idian heads out to fight them. Kerala and Jolliver, putting on spacesuits, realize that the solo ship has come to rescue them. They leave the dock but are still pursued by some soldiers. Cosmo tells the solo ship to keep the Idian gun since they wouldn't be able to use it here. Bees and Hatari are able to find Kerala and Jolliver. A strange light glows from Kerala's abdomen. Bees heads to one of the solo ship's cannons to help Kerala. He fires upon the soldiers pursuing her and Jolliver. They make their way to a small buff clan shuttle. The Idian uses its all missiles attack on the enemy. Jolliver tells Kerala she's gotten stronger. They head out in the shuttle. Bees tells Hatari to pull back the solo ship and have the Idian protect Kerala and Jolliver. Cosmo brings the Idian towards their shuttle, but it is blown up by a stray blast seconds before the Idian reaches it. Cosmo curses the buff clan over Kerala and Jolliver's apparent deaths. Doba and Gindoro are able to hear him. Bees asks Hatari where Lu is. Hatari says the Idian gauge has returned to normal. Bees says to reverse the thrusters and escape. Doba is upset at his force's lack of success against the enemy. Suddenly a glowing light appears in front of the Idian. It is Kerala and Jolliver, unharmed. The Idian grabs them and heads back towards the solo ship. Cosmo tells Bees and Hatari the good news. Jolliver tells Kerala she's a great woman and that he'd try to be with her if she wasn't with Bees already. The solo ship escapes into null space. Doba orders his forces to track down the solo ship, even if they have to go to the end of the universe. At that moment, the Eid is invoked. Yet another strange light envelops the solo ship. Doba and Kerala's encounter was the last chance humanity had, and both sides rejected it. The Eid released its infinite power, using Kerala's baby as the trigger, and the Eid wipes out both races. It scatters humanity and the buff clan, sending them to the end of universe to be reborn as wise and kindhearted, to use technology more wisely, and never to repeat the same mistakes they did by using technology. The souls of Piper Lu and Kerala's baby then travel through space. Topic. Be invoked. Where the TV series ends, the second movie changes events drastically. The Buff Clan is quickly finishing its work on the Ganda Roa, a powerful warship that might be even more powerful than the Idian. After Doba Ajiba declares that he will hunt his daughter to the ends of the universe, the solo ship flees under pursuit of many Buff Clan troops. Harulu sends out her top fighters, Tarorov and Kilarul, in the Zanza Lubu. Cheryl, drunken and mad over Gija's death and armed with the knowledge that the Eid desires to protect children, brings out Piper Lu onto the deck of the ship in order to strengthen the Idian. The force of the Idian gun blows her right off the ship to her death, reuniting her with her beloved Gij. Kerala saves Piper Lu and the solo ship escapes. 
On the bridge of the solo ship, Kerala reveals to everyone else that she's pregnant with a child that Cosmo and the others call a messiah. Kilarul and Tarorov head back to Harulu telling her that Kerala and her unborn child are what manifests the Eid. Harulu decides to both prevent its birth and stop the Eid's power from invoking by killing Kerala. The Zanza Lubu is destroyed in battle, but the three make their way onto the solo ship. Tarorov is killed by Banda Lata, who is killed shortly after by Kilarul. Kerala reveals herself and is shot in the face by Harulu, who flees immediately after. It isn't long before the two of them are annihilated by the Idian gun. Meanwhile, meteors strike both the Earth and the buff clan homeworld reducing them to uninhabitable wastelands. Gindoro, afraid of the Idian, wishing to flee, refuses to listen to Doba and is subsequently killed. Doba, angry with the deaths of his daughters, has the buff clan military force continue to attack the solo ship as it approaches the Gandaroa. In the ensuing battle, Kasha is killed by shrapnel and buff clan soldiers make their way to the solo ship bridge. Hatari, Ripat, Ashura are killed while Fard was mortally wounded. Bees is shot in the neck only to hang on long enough to fire back at the remaining assailants. Doba doesn't care about sacrificing everyone's lives as long as the Idian is destroyed, causing his own soldiers to kill him. The Idian grapples onto the Ganda Roa, which fires and kills everyone aboard both and destroys the solo ship. The Eid is invoked as the Idian and the Gando Roa are destroyed by a resulting blast wiping out much of the universe. The naked souls of everyone, buff clan and earthlings peaceful at last, ascend through space. Bees and Kerala's baby, the Messiah, leads everyone to a new planet in the universe that closely resembles Earth. Topic: <inaudible> Popular response. Like Mobile Suit Gundam before it, the series originally met with rather low ratings and was cancelled after 39 of its scheduled 43 episodes aired. As a result, the producers were forced to insert a short segment at the end of the final episode that ended the series in the middle of the action. Demand for a release of the final unaired episodes followed the show's cancellation, and two movies were produced to end the series. The two movies, The Idian, A Contact and The Idian, Be Invoked, were produced by both Sanrio and Sunrise and released as a double bill by Shochiku in 1982. A Contact featured clips from the first 32 episodes of the TV series interspersed with newly animated footage, as well as modified plot points. Be Invoked featured a modified version of the final episode of the TV series removing the ending sequence, in addition to those episodes that never aired, finishing off the Idian saga once and for all. <laughs> <laughs> Influence The influence of Idian on Japanese animation, despite its rough beginnings and infamous ending, has been considerable. At one time it was rated number 10 among the greatest anime series as compiled by famous anime magazine Animage counting popularity, influence, and opinion. On the other hand, the series has never been very popular, even among Japanese mecha fans. Space Runaway Idion is a predecessor of sorts to Hideaki Anno's Neon Genesis Evangelion and deals with many of the same issues. The Neon Genesis Evangelion series also ends in a similar fashion, with two theatrical releases, the first part Death being composed largely of clips from the already released episodes, and the second part Rebirth, the end of Evangelion made up of new animation devolving into apocalyptic territory much like that of Be Invoked, right down to overtones of Rebirth. Topic. The Idian 
The titular mecha was designed by Yuichi Higuchi at Studio Submarine. One of the most notable features of Idion was the power of the robot, which was more powerful than anything else in Super Robot shows at the time. The Idion is portrayed as a very destructive device in terms of raw destructive power. Although it is, at first, a rather humble weapon in comparison to other mecha, brandishing only an array of missiles and a double-barreled energy cannon called the Glen Cannon on its abdomen as well as limited melee and defensive shields, this changes gradually as the series progresses and the protagonists delve further into the Idion's secrets. The Idion's overall performance increases to incredible heights of speed, durability, and power, even its most basic weapons increase their potency dramatically such as the cinematic, all missiles, attack where all of the Idion's now eyed powered missiles are launched simultaneously at great speeds destroying literally fleets of ships in one attack. Without a doubt, Idion's destructive power reaches godlike status when three distinct weapons are discovered. Black Hole Cannon, which as the name implies, creates a miniature black hole capable of massive destruction. This weapon is only used once in episode 18. The Idion Sword, a beam of pure light emitted from each of Idion's hands. While the beam's destructive power is immense, even cleaving an entire planet in half at one point, its most peculiar quality is its length. While adjustable, the maximum length of the sword is depicted as being quite possibly infinite. It first appeared in episode 29. The Idion Gun, aka the Wave Leader Cannon, a massive blue cannon directly powered by the Idion's eyed energy to produce an enormous white wave of energy, depicted as a tornado with lightning bolts, which destroys literally anything in its path in a 45 degree angle, including star ships and planets. This cannon's initial use leaves the crew astonished to the point of since then refraining from using it until it becomes absolutely necessary. It first premiered in episode 28. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Buff Clan. The Buff Clan are humanoids native to the planet Buff in the Guido Nebula of the Andromeda Galaxy. Throughout the series they use a variety of war vehicles and robots called Heavy Mobile Mecha. These forces are listed in order from appearance and all of them are capable of flying. Gataman Zan, a tan capital ship, it is the primary attack ship that hounds the solo ship throughout the series. Capella, tan saucer-like ships used for aerial combat in atmospheres that are armed with a pair of beam cannons and a pair of machine guns. Deca Bow, purple aerial fighters armed with missile launchers in their sides, four lasers on their tops, a single warhead on their front, and a machine gun on each wing. Gil Bao, a purple variation of Coppolis armed with a pair of beam guns, electromagnetic cables with hooks, and missiles from the underside. Jiren Do, a gray tripod heavy mobile mecha equipped with a particle launch in its eye that fires green energy rings and has missile launchers for hands. Dogu Mac, a blue tripod heavy mobile mecha equipped with an electric whip for the right arm, a pincer claw for the left arm, a pair of laser cannons on the head, a four-tube missile launcher in the torso, and a detachable pod. It is one of the only heavy mobile mecha not to be duplicated or mass-produced. Gram Zan, a white battleship armed with missiles and uses a space null drive. It only appears in Episode 9. Dorawa Zan, a forest green capital ship that joins the Gataman Zan. It possesses a null space drive and is armed with scattering beam cannons on its underside and missiles. Z Lo Jik, purple star fighters with tiny remote recon planes, machines guns, and can store three attack pods on itself. 
These pods are armed with a four-tube missile launcher, a pair of beam guns, can emit tracking devices, and later give an electromagnetic hook cables identical to Gil Baus. Zig Mac, brown bipedal heavy mobile mecha that resemble the gogs from mobile suit Gundam armed with three particle cannons in the torso, pincer claws that when used are literally referred to as the claw attack, and later are armed with a particle launcher identical to the Jiren Do. Gondo Bao, green space fighters armed with a pair of four tube missile launchers, a pair of beam guns on the underside, and eight electric claw like anchors that emit electricity. Sades Zan, a jade green battleship armed with beam cannons that briefly joins the Gataman Zan and Dorawa Zan for only two episodes. Rog Mac, green shelled variations of the Zig Mac armed with missiles from their shell, can emit electricity upon ramming opponents, and can fire yellow lasers from its four eyes. They are also much faster than other heavy mobile mecha. Ganga Lubu, purple tripod heavy mobile mecha used by mercenaries armed with missiles and beam cannons in the torso and the left arm is a five-tube missile launcher that can also launch electric cables. The beam cannons are made of Dovian particles which deteriorate force fields. Kadaka, silver aerial fighters used by mercenaries armed with underside missiles. Gabro Zan, a green battleship used by mercenaries armed with missiles. Darrow Zan, a tan battleship armed with missiles. It only appears in episode 25. Garoa Zan, a replacement of the Gabro Zan armed with lasers. Galbo Jik, grey heavy mobile mecha armed with missiles, lasers, two pairs of grapple claws, and a sonic beam called the gel beam that destroys brain cells. They also split into three parts. Barum Baram, a purple unmanned heavy mobile mecha that could split and crush opponents with a gel zone much like that of Galbo Jik's and is said to have a gel barrier. It was never duplicated or mass-produced. Adigo, green bipedal walkers resembling shelled ROG Max armed with a pair of beam guns, an enhanced particle cannon, missiles from the back, and electric cables. They also proved to be extremely agile. Absinol, a green heavy mobile mecha similar to the Galbo Jik armed with four cables that drain energy and are protected by an energy field. Gatamoa Zan, a green capital ship that chases the solo ship once it is forced to leave Earth and is armed with missiles from its underside and a pair of beam cannons on each wing. Killet Zan, a white supply ship armed with five beam cannons and missiles and possesses a null space drive. Guido Mac, teal ship like heavy mobile mecha armed with four grapple claws and missiles along the midsection. They also split in half. Byrol Jin, an extremely large fortress-like ship armed with gun turrets, missiles, and lasers all over itself. Its overall size is comparable to that of a megalopolis. Gita Z Lo, small green battleships armed with missiles and a double-barreled energy turret on the bridge. Gatil Ru, white aerial fighters armed with electromagnetic hook cables and a pair of beam guns at the nose. Zanza Lubu, a silver variant of the Ganga Lubu that appears in B Invoked. It is only armed with pincer claws. Topic. Links to Gundam Space Runaway Idion shares a number of similarities to Tomino's Mobile Suit Gundam series. As well as similar initial fates for both series cancellation followed by films, though Idion never became a long-running franchise as Gundam did, there are several broad similarities in the makeup of the characters and some reused plot devices such as a teenage electronics expert climbing on board a powerful robot when his home colony is attacked by aggressors.
More explicitly, Tamino included several references to his previous work. Aharo appears in an exploding solo colonist fighter in the second episode. As a side note, this same footage is used in episode 18, but the Haro has been painted over. Amuro Ray makes an appearance in episode 6 as the solo ship's crew gather to plan their next move. In episode 7, Kerala refers to a nebula named the Gundam Nebula. In episode 9, another Haro appears as some dinosaurs explode. In episodes 7, 13, and 19, a Haro can be seen rolling around on a table as the ship shakes. Also in episode 13, a meteor in a shape of Haro can be seen for a few seconds. In episode 18, a poster of Char is seen on a bedroom wall. A few seconds later, as the room explodes, a pair of Haro can be seen flying around the room. Near the end of episode 37 a pink and blue Gundam mobile suit can be seen hanging out with the buff clan fleet. Tamino's appearance in the series would be near the end of Be Invoked, appearing in a spacesuit on the solo ship's bridge with storyboard illustrations in his hands. Fittingly, Tamino himself is killed in the film. Topic. Cast Topic DVD releases The home video releases of Idion have all had very limited production runs. The series' first DVD box was overproduced, resulting in many units that did not sell even years after the release, so the second box set and movie box set had much fewer units produced. As a result, they sold out quickly and it was not uncommon to see the second box set alone command a price of over 80,000 yen used on such websites as Yahoo Japan Auctions or Amazon.co.jp, or all three box sets sell for over 120,000 yen over $1,000 USD, a remarkable feat for 38 episodes and two movies. For reference, the retail price on the 153-episode Dragon Ball box set sold new for 100,000 yen, $800 USD. In 2006 Idion was re-released on single DVDs, but the singles, like previous Idion releases, went quickly out of print due to a low production run. A Blu-ray box set of the TV series was released on February 2, 2013. On November 8, 2017, Hydive announced that they will stream the series on their website beginning on November 9, 2017. On July 5, 2018, anime distributor Made in Japan announced their license to the series. A two-disc SDBD set was set to be released on December 11, 2018, however, after fan complaints, considering the quality shown on the high dive stream at the time, Section 23 announced that the SDBD set would be cancelled and replaced with a HD Blu-ray set down the line. On November 15, 2018, Section 23 announced that the HD Blu-ray set will come on February 5, 2019. Other media Super Robot Wars video games The titular mecha, characters, and other aspects of Space Runaway Idion also make appearances in two of the Super Robot Wars series of anime mecha crossover video games, Super Robot Wars F Final and Third Super Robot Wars Alpha. Reflecting its status in animation, the Idion is considered one of the most powerful mecha ever featured within the SRW games. Idion has a gauge, known as the Eyed Gauge, which increases as Idion is attacked. As the Eyed Gauge rises, Idion's general capabilities increase dramatically, including Idion's N 
becoming infinite and the unit unlocks three weapons zen howi all directional missile idian sword and idian gun the latter two are available in both a normal version and a map version the Idian gun is particularly powerful, along with an attack power of 9999, enough to destroy most lesser enemies in one hit. The map version has a massive blast radius which often almost covers the battlefield. It is one of the most dangerous attacks in the Super Robot Wars series. However, when the Eid Gauge reaches the maximum level, the Idian becomes uncontrollable and goes berserk, destroying the universe by self-destructing, which means the end of the game. Hence, while absorbing attacks can rise the Eid Gauge and let the player to use those devastating weapons, there is a great risk that the Idian will be attacked for too many times and go berserk. Although rather difficult and dangerous to use in Super Robot Wars F, in 3rd Super Robot Wars Alpha the Idian is possibly quite overpowered due to its massively increased ease of use. The Berserk system is also removed. In 3rd Super Robot Wars Alpha, the apocalyptic ending of B invoked is one of three possible endings in the game and is arguably the worst of them all. This ending is triggered during Scenario 56, the final Idian scenario. If a certain decision is made by the player, the tragic events of the Idian finale play out with an unavoidable conclusion. All pilots on your force even state comments of hopelessness as they attack anything when this ending is triggered, to further the feeling of dread upon the horizon. This ending is only available upon the second playthrough, and while it is something most players should see at least once, it also ends the overall game earlier than usual the actual game length is 60 levels, and also doesn't count as a finished game, so it is recommended in most cases that this ending be avoided. The only significant benefit of seeing this ending is getting a glimpse of Messiah, the unborn child of B.E.s and Kerala who in B invoked, guided the dead cast towards a dark recreation of the universe controlled by Kisar Afiz who will most certainly enslave all of humanity for all eternity as he successfully corrupts the Messiah. Manga. The Idian also appears in a non-canon crossover manga with Gundam, Mobile Suit vs. Giant God, Gigantus's Counterattack, with story and artwork by Yuichi Hasegawa. In this story, set in Universal Century 0090, the Federation sends Amuro Rei to recruit Judo Ashta to help deal with a group of Zeon remnants. While this seems routine, the Zeons have uncovered what they call the giant god, namely the Idian, which is never actually called Gigantes nor Idian within the story. While investigating, Judo learns that the Zeons are planning on using Maneva Lao Zabi's new type powers to awaken the giant god and get their revenge. Unfortunately, it goes out of control and begins attacking anything in sight. As Judo infiltrates the giant god, Amuro along with Char Aznable, fight to distract it. As he nears Maneva, the spirit of Kerala and her baby appear, explaining that Idian remade the universe because it hoped that a new type of human, namely, new types, would be the universe's salvation from war. But since this turned out not to be the case, the giant god was set to remake the universe again. Judo also learns that he is the reincarnation of Idian protagonist Cosmo, and violently opposes this plan. With Amuro's help, he manages to free Maneva and shut giant god, Idian down before it can do any more harm. Yoshiyuki Tamino's name comes up in the story, as Amuro explains the myth of giant god the events of the Idian series to Judo, suggesting that he exists in the Gundam world. Topic. See also List of Space Runaway Idian episodes List of Space Runaway Idian characters <laughs>